Oh man, I look wiped out. I have been at work all day, but I struggle to sleep. I never get into a really deep sleep. I just kind of wake up at the slightest sound. Is there anybody out there that's a sleep expert or knows what they're talking about? Something that can help me just, something that can just kind of help me relax and just kind of get into a nice deep sleep. Get out of my flat. Fly, get out. Because I'm constantly thinking about stuff. Hello, I might take up yoga, something like that. I do need to get out and start exercising, right? This lockdown business has just kind of, you know, taken its toll. But anyway, onto the recipe. Today we're gonna to make some chicken pot pies. Now, contrary to belief, it's not actually a pie that contains the old uh, herb, the old MJ, the Buddha, butter, crack back, fry daddy, geek, or juice joint, no. Doesn't contain any of that. It's not that kind of pot pie. It's just a really simple pie to make. Nice chicken filling. And you can kind of switch up the ingredients, put what you like in there. I'm gonna use some rotisserie chicken. I'm gonna put some carrots in there, some leeks. Gonna add some chicken stock and it's gonna be delicious. You can use up your leftover chicken. And if you haven't got enough leftover chicken, don't worry. Stick some cubed ham in there. It's gonna be fine. I also know there's gonna be some purists out there who are gonna complain about this video again. Oh, it's not a real pie. It has got a bottom crust as well as a top crust. Well, I actually like both. This one's just gonna have a very light puff pastry top. There's gonna to be no pastry on the bottom because in the warmer months, a pie like this is kind of lighter, not so heavy. There's not so much pastry to weigh you down. In the winter, I like the sort of pies that have got the crust on the bottom because they're much more heavier, much more filling. But yeah, they're both just as good as each other. But anyway, let's crack on with it. Remember, if you're new here, to hit that subscribe button. And when you do, make sure you click the little bell icon, allow all notifications. That way, when I upload a new video, you get notified. But the first job we need to do is sweat off some veg, but not in a sauna, in this pan. Right, so we need to start off with our base vegetables for our chicken pie filling. And you can use whatever veg you like really. Any good root veg, potatoes, swede, or rutabaga if you're in America. But I'm using leeks and carrot for the base of mine. Let's get these puppies on the go. And all I'm gonna do is take off the end. A little tip for you, I have shown this on a previous video, but a really simple way to chop leeks and clean them is to run your knife down the length, turn it to the opposite side, Go down again, straight down the middle, until it kind of fans out like that. And then you can rinse that under the tap, get all the dirt out, and then we can slice it. Nobody wants chipped teeth on gritty, horrible leeks. Get all the mud out your leeks. Just slice them up, nice and small. So, in with the leeks into my pan that I've got just off camera. Next. We're gonna peel some carrots. Nice organic ones there. Sort of two carrots about that sort of size is gonna be fine. Um, but obviously carrots come in various different sizes, so just kind of use your eye. Roughly that much. And I'm just gonna peel these up. Then all I'm gonna do is top and tail those, just to take off the nasty bits. Give those a quick rinse. And all I'm gonna do is just dice these up. Same sort of size as the leeks. Nothing fussy here at all. Okay, so once the carrots are diced up, in they go with the leeks. Next, I'm gonna add a couple of fresh baileys and I'm just gonna squish them up. In they go. About a tablespoon or two of olive oil. And I'm gonna get that onto a low heat. Now, what we want to achieve for the base of, well, let's be honest, most delicious things, is to take these vegetables until they go nice and soft and start to release their sugars, go nice and sweet. Maybe caramelize a little bit, but you don't want to kind of scorch them. They don't want to burn. This is just going to impart a lot of flavor into your chicken pie filling. And it's a very crucial step. Don't skip it. Don't just chuck this in raw, because your pie will be So I'm going to leave these for about five, 10 minutes, just until they start to go soft. And whilst that's ticking away, I'm going to go off and get everything else prepped. Okay, so before we move on to the next bit, we're going to talk about time. Not this kind of time this kind of thyme. These are two variants of fresh thyme that you'll commonly buy in the supermarkets. You'll notice with this sort, 
They're very young, tender sort of stems on there. The leaves are a lot broader, a lot wider, and it just looks fresher, almost like salad leaves. Whereas this stuff is a lot drier. You'll see that the stems are a lot more twiggy and a lot firmer. Now, if you're using this stuff, you'll need to pick off the leaves. Just run your fingers down and pick off the little thyme leaves. With this stuff, which is what I'm gonna to use today, you don't need to do that. All you need to do is just slice it up. Because the stems on this are much more tender, you don't need to worry about it. So I'm gonna get the thyme chopped up. It's probably about a tablespoon there, nice and fine. And that's ready to go. Okay, so to the butter, I'm gonna add the plain flour. It's about 40 grams of each. And the flour and the butter mixed together is gonna to form the base of our sauce. But we do need to cook out the flour. Just for one to two minutes, it just takes out the graininess, takes out the raw flour taste, and then we can add the stock. So after about a minute or so, it will start to smell really nice and toasty. The flour's cooked out. We we'll start adding the stock. I'm using Nor chicken stock. Of course you knew that, <laughs> because I always do. Just a little at a time. Don't add it all in one go, because that's how you end up with a lumpy sauce. And it'll immediately thicken up. See, already it's turning into a thick, gloopy paste. And that's absolutely fine. Once it's mixed through, we can add a bit more. And always make a bit more stock than what you probably need, because that way you can kind of adjust the consistency. You know, if it goes a bit too thick, you can always add a bit more. More stock, you get the idea. I'm also gonna add in the fresh thyme that we chopped up. And also, just for a bit of added zip, I'm going to add some English mustard. If you can't get English mustard where you live, just use Dijon, but you probably wanna add a bit more because English mustard is pokey stuff. And I'm gonna go in with one and a half teaspoons. It's gonna be fine. It's just gonna add a bit of extra kick. And I'm gonna leave that to simmer away for about five, 10 minutes, just so the carrots can finish off cooking through. We can add the chicken, the other bits and pieces, and that's our pie filling done. A few moments later. So that is now thickened up quite nicely. I'm just gonna turn the heat down. The carrots have gone nice and soft, or soft-ish. Still got a bit of resistance there. Now I'm gonna start adding the chicken. Let's see how we get on with that. Is that enough? Oh yeah, that's plenty. It is a little bit too thick, so I'm gonna add a bit more stock. But get it to the consistency you like. I'm gonna give you a guide. If you want it a bit thicker, use less. But I kinda like a nice, happy medium. I'm just gonna check for seasoning quick. Does need some pepper. And just the tiniest pinch of salt. Now, lastly, I'm gonna add some frozen peas. In we go. Just eyeball it. There's probably a good couple of handfuls in there. And that is your pie filling done, folks. What I am gonna do is fish out them bay leaves because they've done their job. I know you're in here somewhere. Is that it? No? Is that it? There it is. So what we need to do now is transfer this filling into a nice cold bowl because this filling needs to cool down completely. Do not, I repeat, do not make your pies with hot filling because if you were to assemble the pies now with hot filling, well, puff pastry is made with butter and it's just gonna sink into the pie and be a gloopy mess. So we need to cool this down completely before we make the pies. Well, I forgot something, didn't I? Typical. Double cream. Got our double cream. Here we go. On about 100 mil. Oh, yes. So now we're gonna leave it to cool and then we can make the pies. Oh, dear. Hello. Uh, I hate doing the dishes. It's like the worst of the kitchen jobs, isn't it? In cleaning up after yourself. But the jobs we must do. I try to do a lot more of it because I make videos for you guys. But how is everybody? How are we all doing? You know, the country's coming out of lockdown. I know it's pretty bad for you guys in the States. Brazil's not doing too great. There's spikes happening all over the world. But we have got some sense of semi-normality at the moment, at least here in the UK. You know, how is that affecting you guys? You know, because this thing has played havoc with my mental health, for sure. Because not being able to have that freedom to do what I want when I want, you know, I felt constricted. But I've got a moral duty to help people. Okay, we're all in this together. We've got to get through it, guys. I don't know, I'm standing here waffling to you guys whilst doing the washing up, but I do genuinely care about you. You're my family in a way. 
I like to look out for you. So leave a comment. Tell me how you're getting on. Uncle Adam is here to help. Is that everything? Oh, there's still more over there. I'll see you in a bit. Right, so the filling's now cool enough to handle. Well, not actually handle. I'm not gonna put my hands in there, but you know what I mean. Now, I'm only gonna make up two small pies because Right, there's only me eating. There's no way I'm gonna get through all of that in one sitting. But listen, you can make it up however you like. You can make lots of smaller ones. Listen, that's enough fill in there to make four, five, maybe six pies. You can make one huge pie and then just lay the puff pastry sheet on top. But we're gonna make some small little dainty ones. So I've got two little cast iron casserole dishes there. I'm just gonna fill these puppies up. And be generous. Oh, I've made a mess already. Never mind. Yeah, be generous, all right? Don't be stingy with your pie filling. Almost to the top, but not quite. Now what I'm gonna do is put the rest of that filling in the freezer and I'll use it for another day. Now this next step is entirely optional, but what I'm gonna do is just because I can, I've got some cranberry sauce and I'm just gonna lay a small teaspoonful just on top, just as a little added surprise, you know? Like little cranberry jewels as you bite into it. And really what it's about is because that's a very rich filling. You know, we added a bit of mustard for a bit of heat and that bit of cranberry sauce, it's just gonna add a bit of sweetness, you know, balance things out a bit. Now I'm gonna pop these to one side just while we cut out the pastry discs. Okay, right, pastry then. I do need a rolling pin. Here it is. Okay, so literally all I'm gonna do is take my pastry sheet out, open it up, just gonna lightly dust my work surface. Just a little bit, roll it out, just a little bit. You don't need to go mad. I'm not gonna look for a really thin pastry. I just wanna roll it out, just enough to work with. Now I'm using this bowl as a template because it's slightly bigger than the diameter of the little dishes that we're baking the pies in. And you want that because you want some overlap. So I'm gonna cut out two discs and two. And if you're making one big pie, you can just kind of roll this out a bit thinner and just kind of slap it on, tuck the edges in. It's a very rough, rustic pie. So there's our pastry discs ready to go. Now, what I'm going to do is take some of this excess pastry and just kind of roll it out into a bit of a thin sausage. Because what we're going to do is create a little bit of a rim. And that just helps the pastry discs get a bit of purchase, you know? Just like that. So let's get that on. Just kind of press it on. Then I'm just going to get on one of the pastry discs, flop it over, just kind of mold it over. It's that simple. So there we have it, one little pot pie, almost ready. Just gonna pop a little hole in the top. And then I'm gonna do the same with the other one, egg wash them, and then we can get them in the oven. Okay, right, we need to work quick because the heat in this kitchen is starting to make that pastry melt. So all I've got here is a beaten egg with a pinch of salt. Make sure to add the salt because that helps break down the white and it just becomes much easier to brush. Get that over, quick. Oh, hope these turn out all right. Those are done, let's get them in the oven. Oh God, sweating, sweating. But they'll take about 20 to 30 minutes to cook. All we're looking to do is to reheat the filling and that puff pastry should rise up, go nice and golden brown, nice and crispy. And then you'll have your pot pies. Hopefully these don't melt and disintegrate in the oven because my kitchen's too hot and my pastry was a bit too warm. But I'm gonna stick some spuds on Get a bit of veg going, because this is my tea. Then we can get them out of the oven, give them a taste. God, <clears throat> I do not like the heat at all. I saw Wendy's, where y'all from? Hello, like Owen Wilson. Wow. Look, turned out really good actually. Really, really nice. I thought for a second, I thought, oh, that pastry is going to be ruined, but turned out all right. Which just goes to prove you've got to be careful with puff pastry. It's got to be cold. Your filling's got to be cold. Your house has got to be like a fridge. <sighs> Not that extreme. But the pastry is nice and crispy. You can hear that. Bit of. ASMR pastriness. But listen, it's late, let's dig in. I've brought you down a bit closer, just so you can see. Got that lovely, wonderful filling. Get a bit of pastry as well. Let's try it. 
so good. That pastry is nice and crispy, and that filling is just so rich and savoury. And it's just a really simple pie to make, guys. And like I said, you can switch it up. If you don't like mustard, don't put it in. If you want to stick some ham in there, do it. Do it. But that, folks, is stupendous. And just to show you, that's the other one. That's the less pretty one for the thumbnail. But it's still going to be delicious. And I'll probably cool that down. Have it for a snack at work tomorrow. And everyone will be jealous. Jealous of my pie supremeness. This kitchen is like a sauna. So there we go, a really simple chicken pot pie. You can throw that together. If I can, you certainly can. And listen, if you want to put some sweet corn in there, it's wrong, but you can do it. Ham in there, great. Some sliced shallots would be great. Mushrooms, if you like mushrooms, stick them in. I don't like them, so I've not put them in. But anyway, that finishes this video off. Thanks again for watching. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon, allow all notifications. That way, when I upload a new video, you get notified. But anyway, thanks again for watching. I'll see your gorgeous faces in the next video. And bye for now. Oh, sweating buckets. I'm going to eat this, have a shower, and I'm going to go to bed.